Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Pretzel Bites virtual class at the kids' table. My name is Miss Elena, and I am very excited to make this a delicious snack with you today. So it's going to be a little tricky because the, we need to make a dough that has to rise for ideally 45 minutes. Um, so it's gonna to be tough for us to do this in a one hour class, but I think that we can. So um, we'll go ahead and give you guys a, just a couple minutes to settle in and get ready. Um, I'm gonna go wash my hands right now. That's step one. So if you guys haven't done that yet, you should do that too. So let's go do that and then we'll come back and go over just to start our dough ingredients so we can get the dough made and to start it rising. And then once that's happened, then we'll go over the rest of our tools and ingredients because we'll have plenty of time to get them together, okay? So go wash your hands. I'll meet you right back here in about 20 seconds, okay? to be too hot because the ingredient in our dough that makes it rise is active dry active yeast and uh, if the water is too hot it can kill the yeast because believe it or not even though this doesn't look very alive it is very much alive and that is what what makes our dough rise is it's live active cultures that get activated with the with the warm water and then we put a little sweetener in it and the yeast starts to eat the sugars and it starts to bubble and that's what gives is going to give our dough the volume so warm water but not hot and we need a little bit of honey so this recipe actually guys was um we took from somebody uh, a chef that used to work here she used to be a manager at kids table her name is carrie carrie schloss and she wrote a cookbook called the Bee Charmer Cookbook uh, for some friends that she has in Asheville that uh, have a honey company. And so we used a special kind of honey, fur honey, for when we did the recipe with her. Um, we don't have any fur honey right now, so we're just gonna use regular honey, which is totally fine. So that's the sugar we're gonna add to our dough to feed the yeast to, to get it bubbling and going. And then we need some salt for our dough. So we need about uh, two, te two teaspoons of salt. <clears throat> and then this is really exciting. It is all whole wheat flour is what we're using to make our pretzels. So our pretzels are 100% whole wheat. So we need quite a bit of flour, about three and a half cups of flour. So those are the ingredients we need for our pretzel bites. And then uh, to make the dough, all we really need is a whisk and a spoon maybe. I've got a spatula here, but a big wooden spoon or a spatula will work great as long as it's something that's pretty sturdy to stir the dough. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. We'll get our dough made. Then once that's rising, we'll go over everything else, okay? So first we need one and a half cups of water. So let's see, I guess I'll use this measurement. Actually, I'm gonna use a quarter cup because I don't wanna get my flour scoop dirty. So one and a half cups, if I'm using a quarter cup measure would be six quarter cups. Okay, so I'm gonna measure this out six times. So we've got one, two, three, and four, so that's one cup, and we need one and a half cups, so five, oh, I hope I have enough in here, and 
six. I'm a little shy. Miss Anastasia, I might need another tablespoon. We'll see. But we'll get a little bit more water just in case if our dough's a little dry, I'll add a little more water. And then let's see, we need a little bit of honey. We need a tablespoon of honey. And actually that doesn't need to be exact. So I'm just gonna do a little drizzle. I'm gonna do a little drizzle. You can measure it out exactly if you want. But we just need a little bit of sweetness in there. Okay? And then we need our yeast. So we need four and a half teaspoons of yeast, which is also a tablespoon and a half, because there are three teaspoons in a tablespoon. Fun math fact, kitchen math. Okay, so make sure they're nice and level, right? So here, I'll do this over here. You can just kind of shake the yeast off or you can level it with your finger. So one and oh, two and three and four and then a half, four and a half. Okay. So now we have our one and a half cups of warm water. We have a good generous drizzle of honey and we have four and a half teaspoons of yeast. And I'm gonna take a whisk and I'm just gonna stir this up to mix that honey and water and yeast up. So we're gonna let that sit for a moment to let the yeast activate a little bit, okay? So we're gonna let it get bubbly. And while we're doing that, we can measure out our flour and our salt, because we're gonna add those together after into the, into the yeast mixture. So I've got my, my big bowl of whole wheat flour. We, by the way, about, I don't know, a year ago maybe? year and a half ago started using local flour. We started buying local flour from a, a farm called Janie's Mill. It's so delicious. One of these days we will start packaging it and selling it for you guys too because we love it so much and local flour is pretty hard to find. So we need three and a half cups of whole wheat flour. So I just got an empty bowl I'm going to measure it into while our yeast is starting to do its thing over here. So you gotta dig in really deep, get a nice full scoop, but this is too much, right? It's coming up over the top of the scoop, so we need to level it. So you can make a, kind of straighten your hand like this, because your finger might not be long enough to level it. So you can use your whole hand. You can also use a butter knife if you want. And we just wanna brush, we don't wanna pack it down. We're just brushing that top layer of flour off so it's nice and flat. So we have one and make sure it's all the way full, right? Don't leave a hole in there. Two, and three, oh, perfect. And then we need a half. So we'll switch to our half measuring cup. Three and a half, perfect. And then I'm gonna keep my extra flour because we might need to adjust um, once we mix all of our dough ingredients together. If our dough is too wet, we might need to add a little bit more flour. If it's too dry, we need to add a little bit more water. So we'll adjust it once we're mixing everything. Plus for actually rolling out our dough, we're probably gonna need some extra flour too. So we'll keep that off to the side. And then we need to, two teaspoons of salt to go into our dough. So I've got my teaspoon measure over here. And again, make sure to level it off. Whoop, that's a little clumpy. Let me break up those salt clumps. Let's try that again. So we have one and whoop, two. Yeah, make sure it's nice and full. Okay. So now I can mix this up. I'll just use a spatula here to combine the salt and the flour. 
And then we'll check on our yeast, see if it's bubbling a bit. Ooh, I can see those bubbles on the top. I'll show you. Hopefully your yeast mixture is bubbling at home too. So check it out, see if I can show you. Can you see? Kind of. Little bubbles on the top starts to kind of foam and bubble up a little bit. That shows you that your yeast is doing its thing. It's, it's coming alive. Because when the yeast eats sugar, it releases um, carbon dioxide. And that's what makes the bubbles form in the, in the water and that's what makes the dough rise. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my flour salt mixture and add it to this bowl that has the water and the honey and the yeast, okay? And then we're gonna stir it up. So you can use a stand mixer um, I would, but ours is broken, unfortunately. So that's okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my workout for the day. We're gonna use our muscles to mix the dough up and then knead the dough as well. So first, before you touch it with your hands, you wanna use a tool like a wooden spoon, or here I'm using a spatula, to um, get the dough, the flour mixed in to the water. And then once the dough kind of starts to form, then we can use our hands and actually knead it, okay? So you gotta do a little bit of work here to get all that water evenly distributed with the flour. So you don't see any kind of loose liquid anymore in your bowl. So this is what it's starting to look like here, okay? Are you guys all with me? How's it going at home? Do you have all your dough ingredients together? You can give us a little thumbs up, little heart, little Monday morning heart. All right, my dough is all mixed together. I don't have any more loose liquid in here, so I'm gonna clean off my spatula, and now I can start using my hands. And I didn't put quite, I was about a tablespoon short of water, but this dough is looking pretty good. I might need a little bit more because I've got a little bit of flour loose, just a little bit at the bottom. I'm gonna start working it here. Maybe I'll put just a few drizzles of water in mine. Okay. So you just want to use your hand to form the dough, kind of use it to collect. Use your ball of dough to collect all the bits of dough and flour that might be stuck to the sides of your bowl. And then once you have it all together, we can take the dough out of our bowl, put it on our work surface, and knead it. Okay, so see I'm just using the dough to, I'm spinning it around my bowl to collect everything. So all those little bits are kind of becoming part of my big dough ball. And see, now I have dough and I have a pretty clean bowl here. So we're going to put this bowl off to the side. We can oil it lightly after we're done kneading our dough to put our dough back in here to rise. So now, this is about the consistency of the dough that you want. It sticks to your fingers just a tiny little bit, but not a lot. If the dough is sticking to your hands too much, then that's a sign that you need a little bit more flour, just like a little sprinkling, okay? If the dough seems too dry, then you'll need a, a few more drips of water. Just adjust it in little increments, okay? Don't like put a whole scoop of flour in because then you'll end up with your dough will be too dry, okay? So great. So now when we're gonna knead our dough, we wanna put just a little bit of flour on our work surface because the dough is a little moist and wet. So we'll just sprinkle a little flour there. Obviously make sure you've got a clean work surface, right? Okay, and then to knead the dough, you can use the heel of your hand, which is this back part of your heel. 
okay? The, the part of your hand that's closest to your wrist. That's the heel of your hand. And then you're gonna press into the dough and you're gonna fold the dough over and then kind of spin it and press into the dough again. Okay, you just keep doing that over and over again. And as you keep working the dough, the dough will get nice and smooth and elastic. And that's what we want. So we need to do this for a few minutes. Like I said, if you have a stand mixer, you can let your dough hook do this work for you. But we're gonna do it by hand. I think it's kind of more fun to do it by hand anyway. It's very satisfying. So you're just folding, pressing in with the heel of your hand. You can stand up too if you want, so you can really press your whole body weight in there. Oh, and see it's sticking a little bit. So that's okay. We can just get a little more flour on there from our flour work surface and keep going. Fold and press and spin and fold and press and turn, fold, press, turn. Oh my gosh, it's stuck a lot. You get a little bit more flour. Just a little sprinkle. All right. Fold and press turn, fold, press, turn. Ooh, are you guys getting tired yet? Hopefully you have more people there in, at home to help you. Maybe you guys can take turns. If you're cooking with multiple people, you can also divide the dough up into like two or three pieces so that everybody can have a piece to knead. That's totally cool. All right, so we still need to go a few more minutes because look, see our dough, it's looking definitely a little bit smoother, but we still need to work it a little bit more. We're gonna need it a little more. I had to wear a sweater today because it was so cold outside. Sweater's not really ideal for cooking in, but it is very chilly out there. All right, fold and press. Oh, I'm sticking again a little bit. Get a little bit of flour here. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. Fold over. Press down with the heel of your hand. Make sure to keep turning the dough as you go. Is your dough starting to look a little bit smoother? Mine is getting good, I think. I think maybe, oh, it's stuck to my hand again. I think maybe just a couple more minutes and we'll be good to go. So really you'd want to let the dough rise for about 45 minutes usually. Um, it's not so much a time thing, it's how much the dough, how much rising the dough is doing. It usually takes about 45 minutes for the dough to double in size. That's what we want. Um, but it'll go faster if it's in a warmer place. So if you have a proof setting on your oven, you can put it in the oven, it'll rise a little bit faster. Sometimes we put it near our dish sanitizers because the steam comes out of there and that'll make it rise a little faster too. So we'll probably only be able to give it about half an hour um, today, but you can always wait and let your dough rise longer and finish the video later. Up to you. Okay, so I think our dough is starting to look pretty good. So do you see your, your dough starts to get softer, smoother? I think maybe 10 more kneads and we're gonna call our dough ready. 
So fold and press and turn, fold, press, turn. That was two. Three. I think I'm going to be sore tomorrow. Four. Five. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. I think this looks good. So now what you can do is make it into a nice ball. You see how much our dough forms much more easily into a nice, nicely shaped ball right now than it did at the beginning nice and smooth. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil in this bowl. Just lightly oil your bowl, just the sides. You don't want it sitting in a pool of oil. Um, and then we're going to cover it with plastic wrap and let it rise until it's about twice this size. Okay, so take a good look at your dough because you want it to look twice as big before we continue with our dough work, okay? Miss Anastasia, can I have a little oil? I should have gotten oil out, but I didn't. Oh, this looks so good. Are you guys excited for pretzel bites? I am very excited. I did not really have breakfast this morning. Oh, thank you. You can use any oil that you have handy. Maybe not olive oil for this, just because, I don't know, you could. But olive oil tends to be a little bit more strongly flavored. Okay, so I just spread that oil around to oil the bowl. And we're going to take our dough, put it right in there, and then take a sheet of plastic wrap, like this, and cover the top nice and securely. Okay? So just seal it all around, and you're going to notice that the top of the plastic over your bowl is going to start to puff up. Okay. So there we go. Amazing. So we're going to put that off to the side or put it in a nice warm place. Not a place that's warm enough to start cooking it and make the top crusty, okay? Just warm enough to get the yeast to work a little bit faster. So now, if you worked as hard as I did with your hands, you're going to have a little, little bits of dough on your hands. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands, and then we'll come back and go over uh, the rest of our ingredients for basically for topping our pretzels and for dipping. All right? I'll meet you back here in just a few seconds, maybe 20 seconds or so. dough kneaded and covered with plastic wrap in an oil bowl. Are we all together now? Anyone? Little thumbs up? Little, little heart? Pretzel bite heart? Um, Carmen is just coming in and she missed the baking soda part. How much baking soda? Oh, we didn't put any baking soda in our dough, actually. The baking soda comes um, at the next step. So we're going to talk about that. The baking soda, the only things that are in the dough are the warm water. It's one and a half cups of warm water. 
about a tablespoon of honey. I just did a very generous drizzle and um, four and a half teaspoons of the dry active yeast and three and a half cups of whole wheat flour and then two teaspoons of salt. That's what our dough is made of. But we can talk about our baking soda bath now. What we're gonna do is the thing that gives pretzels their nice crusty outside and their nice chewy inside is a baking soda bath. So we're actually gonna give our pretzel bites a bath in very warm water, like pretty much hot water, about 160 degrees, um, mixed with baking soda. So we'll make that right before we're ready to, uh, to roll out our dough. Um, and that is what giving the, the pretzels the baking soda bath before you put them on the baking sheet and top them is what helps to give the pretzels their, their very characteristic crunchy outside, crusty outside with their chewy inside. <clears throat> so then we can talk about what we're gonna do for the tops of our pretzels. So in this recipe, we can brush all of our pretzels with a honey butter mixture. Okay, we can make our own honey butter with about uh, four tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of honey. And so for that, we're gonna need honey and butter, which Miss Anastasia is getting. The butter should be softened so you can soften it by leaving it at room temperature or, um, or you can soften it in the microwave. If you do do it in the microwave, just make sure to use a low power setting because otherwise, as you guys probably know, the butter tends to explode all over the inside of your microwave if it, it gets hot too fast. So I don't recommend that. You don't wanna have that big of a mess to clean up when we're done. So for the honey butter brushing, we need honey and butter, very easy. And then for toppings, you know, you can kind of do whatever you would like. The ones that we're gonna do, we've got uh, sesame seeds, so we can make some pretzel bites with sesame seed topping. So we've got these cool sesame seeds, and we're just doing raw sesame seeds because the seeds will toast in the oven while the pretzels are cooking. Um, the other thing, and this might be my favorite topping, is coarse sea salt. So the coarse salt is, I don't know if you can see there, but you get the bigger crystals and then you get that nice crunch from the salt crystals on top of the pretzel. I love that. So those and the honey butter helps these things, by the way, stick to the top of our pretzel. So we'll do the baking soda bath with the pretzel bites and then we'll brush them with the honey butter and then we can sprinkle the toppings on top and the honey butter, because of the honey butter, the toppings will stick. And then we're gonna make another topping, which is kind of fun if you like, if you have a sweet tooth, we can make a cinnamon sugar topping. So for that, you need some, whoops, some ground up cinnamon and some sugar. And then we're also gonna make a dipping sauce. So we are gonna make a honey mustard dipping sauce, which I don't know if you can guess the ingredients in a honey mustard dipping sauce, but it's pretty straightforward. It is honey and mustard. Very simple for honey mustard. So we're gonna make our, top, our cinnamon sugar and our honey mustard uh, before we are ready to roll out our dough. So we're gonna give our dough another solid 20 minutes, I hope. Okay, so let me clean up. This we'll use for our baking soda bath. We still might need flour. Okay, we're done with these, our yeast and our salt. Okay, just trying to get some of my stuff off the table here. I don't think I need these anymore. It's good to try to keep a clean workstation so you don't get confused with all the various things that you got going on here. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our honey butter for brushing. So here we have uh, some softened butter, and that's uh, four tablespoons of butter, I believe. Let's see. Oh, it said six tablespoons. That's weird. Hmm. Is this six tablespoons or four tablespoons? Six. It's six, okay. Hmm. 
Because we only need six total. Weird. Okay. Six total honey butter. But we have six tablespoons of butter and it calls for two tablespoons of honey, which might make more like eight tablespoons of honey butter, but we'll just have a little extra. Okay. So we have our honey, we have our bowl of butter. So I'm gonna do this right in this bowl, because why not, right? So what you can do is the honey's probably gonna stick a little bit to our spoon, which is okay. Um, if you want, you can oil your spoon first, then the honey slips right out. That's pretty cool. Oh, I guess I could do that. Oh my gosh, I have a little oil right here. So just a little drop of oil. I actually could have probably also greased it with the butter. That's a good idea. So I'm just gonna coat the inside of the measuring spoon with oil, and that way our honey will actually slide right out. So, got our little squeezy bottle of honey here. We're gonna do two tablespoons. Okay, so one. Oh my gosh, look at all that honey, it's so good. And see? No honey is stuck in the spoon. It's magical. And two. There we go. Oh, see now a little bit of the honey is sticking, but definitely still not as much as if we did not grease our spoon. Look at that, almost no honey in there. Amazing. Okay. So that's our honey butter and we can use, we probably can just use our brush, let's see, to stir this up so that the honey and the butter are very well combined here. Oh, that looks really good. I kind of just want to eat it. I think we should taste it. I'm going to get a tasting spoon. Yeah, actually, Anastasia is gonna. Anastasia just looked at me. Me? I said yes, please. Anastasia is gonna get me. I have an assistant, Miss Anastasia. I hope you have an awesome assistant at home. All right, and actually, since my butter is a little, I'm gonna stir it up a little bit better with my. Thank you, because some of my butter hardened a little bit at the bottom, and my brush isn't quite firm enough to get in there. So you can just use a spoon too. Oh my goodness, this looks so good. And then after you finish stirring it up, you can use the spoon to taste it. Just make sure you're done stirring because you don't want to lick your spoon and then put it back in there. That's sharing germs, which we definitely do not want to do. Okay, so look at that. So your butter now has a nice kind of golden color to it because of the honey. So I don't want a big spoonful of honey butter, definitely. I just want a little tiny taste to see what it tastes like. Mmm. Wow. That would be so good just on some toast or something. Oh, it's delicious. Okay. So this is the honey butter that we're going to brush on top of our pretzels before we top them. So we're going to put this off to the side. That's all ready to go. I'm gonna flick the rest of this off the spoon. Mmm, so good. Wow, did you guys try yours? Mmm, delicious. Okay, so now what? Let's make our cinnamon sugar mixture next. So, this is really fun because you can do it to taste. If you like just a little bit of cinnamon, Put a little bit of cinnamon in there. If you like it really cinnamony, you can add more cinnamon because all it is is cinnamon and sugar. So we have a little bit of sugar here. I'm just going to pour it in here. This bowl will be easier for you to see. And then you just take your cinnamon. You can use your pinching fingers if you want and just pinch. I'm going to start with four pinches of cinnamon because I really like cinnamon. One, two, three, and four. And then you can just use your fingers to, to stir it up. 
Okay, you see why it's so important that we have clean hands when we're cooking? Because our hands, our fingers, are most important tools, kitchen tools, right? They're always with us. Okay, so this sugar has a pale color. I'm gonna taste a little bit by sprinkling it into my mouth. I think I might want more cinnamon though. Mmm, it's good, but I'd like a little bit more. I think I'm gonna put the rest of what's in my container in here. Boop. Okay, see now mine's a little bit darker. I think that's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna taste it again. Now remember, just a tiny little pinch, and then if you just sprinkle it into your mouth without touching your lips, then you don't need to wash your hands again. Mmm. Perfect. Did you guys adjust your cinnamon sugar and taste it? Is it exactly the right amount of cinnamony? I'll wait for a thumbs up before we go on to our next thing. Put this off to the side. Thumbs up or heart? You guys know I love my heart. My sweater is kind of cinnamon colored. We got a thumbs up. Amazing. So the next thing we need to do, we have our sesame seeds and our salt. Uh, we don't even really need to do anything with those because those just get sprinkled on top. So we've got our cinnamon sugar, our sesame seeds, our coarse salt, and our honey butter mixture for brushing. Now we can make our honey mustard dipping sauce. So I have a bowl and a uh, fork that I'm gonna use to uh, stir up. You can use a whisk if you want to, but I just grabbed a fork because that works just as well for this. And I've got some Dijon mustard here. I would definitely recommend Dijon mustard instead of yellow mustard for this. And I'm gonna just put a big scoop in here, maybe two, two big spoonfuls of mustard. And then you can add as much honey as you like. So if you want it a little spicier, you would add less honey. If you want it a little bit sweeter, you would add more honey. So obviously start smaller because you can always add more honey. You can't really take it out once you mix it in. But I guess you could always add more mustard to balance it out. But I'm gonna start with about the same amount of honey as I have mustard. I'm just gonna, I'm not even measuring it because this is all to taste. So I'm just gonna squeeze it over the top. Okay, I think that looks good. And now I'm gonna stir it up and then I'm gonna taste it. Oh, that looks like it's gonna be pretty strong. Mmm, I like my honey mustard on the spicy side. See, look at that. Get your very own honey mustard sauce. So easy to make. Two ingredients, honey and mustard. Okay, I think that it's ready for me to taste. I'm gonna take my tasting spoon that I used for the honey butter and I'm gonna flip it around and use this is a kitchen trick. Use the other side of the spoon to taste, and that way you don't keep dirtying as many utensils, right? I'm just gonna dip it in there. Whoop, very drizzly. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Whoa. That's a little spicy. I want it spicy, but I think I'm still gonna add a little bit more honey to smooth it out a little bit. Of course, now I'm gonna need another tasting spoon, but I think it's gonna be good, so I'm just gonna use the stirring fork. After I add some more honey and stir it in, I'll use the fork to taste it. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I also have my mustard spoon I could use for tasting. Okay, let's stir this last bit of honey in, and then I'm gonna taste it again. Make sure it's perfect. All right, and 
give this a little whirl. Mmm. Perfect amount of sweetness and kick from the mustard. I think mine is ready. Mine's done. So I'm gonna set that to the side. Do you guys have your honey mustard mixture done? To your taste, just the right amount of sweetness, just the right amount of spice? You can give us a thumbs up if you're ready to go and I'm gonna clean up some of my tools a little bit here. baking soda bath. Okay, so we need some hot water. We need one cup of hot water. So we don't need a very big bath, right? Just a little bath. So this is a cup. So we just need something deep enough so we can dip our pretzel bites in there. Oh, look, Miss Anastasia gave me a kettle of water here. I guess I can just use this. So I've got a bowl here. And we can measure one cup of water. This water is pretty hot, but it'll cool a little bit. So be very careful, by the way, because obviously really hot water can burn you. So, is that right up there? Um, so make sure that your water's not too hot, that it will burn you. And then we're gonna take some baking soda. We need a quarter cup of baking soda, so I have quarter cup measure right here. This is our baking soda. And we're just gonna fill this up whoop, all the way as much as we can here. There we go. And put it in the hot water and then we're gonna stir it to dissolve the baking soda in the water. So we don't want like big, big clumps of baking soda in there. We need it to dissolve. Oh my gosh, and it's bubbling. That's so cool. It like sizzled a little bit and fizzed up. Okay, so now once your baking soda is dissolved in the water, it should look kind of like your water will be kind of milky white. Okay. Now we're gonna set this to the side and see, check our dough. It's not quite as risen I don't think that's the right way to say that. It hasn't risen as much as I would like, but it's gotten quite a bit bigger than it was. So you can see that our plastic wrap is, is distended a little bit here on our bowl. So that is a sign that something is definitely happening in there, that the yeast is doing its job. And now check this out. So it's nice and warm in there. I'm going to show you what our dough looks like. It's quite a bit bigger than it was before, right? Again, not quite as big as we would like it to be a little bit bigger. So if you can let your dough rise a little bit more, I would recommend it. Uh, but for right now, we're going to carry on because otherwise we're going to be hanging out together until like mid-afternoon. So what we're going to do... Oh, by the way, at this point, you might want to preheat your oven to 375. Yes, 375 degrees. That's what we're going to bake our pretzel bites at. So now is a good time to preheat your oven. So we want to divide our dough into 12 pieces. So we like to use a chopper to do this. Miss Anastasia has really been good at dividing up dough with a chopper during her pizza classes every Friday. So I'm gonna cut it into four pieces and then cut each of those pieces into three. And that should give us 12 pieces total. Yeah, so I'm gonna cut it in half this way. Okay, whoa, there we go. And then I'll cut each of these pieces in half. that and then look at those pretty little dough triangles and then I'm gonna cut 
each of these pieces into three. Let's see if I can do that. We just want them to be about the same size, okay? It doesn't need to be exact, but about the same size. So let's see, one, two, and three. Let's see how I did. This one's a little bigger. We'll divide that up. Okay. And maybe I'll just do it this way. One, and two, three. Look at that. One. So each piece gets cut twice to make three pieces. Oh my gosh, look at all these little pieces of dough. Last one. One, two, and three. Okay. So now we want to take each piece of dough and use our hands to roll it into a rope. Okay, so we're kind of making like a dough snake. So you can do it like this. This is how I like to do it. But you can also just do it on the table. Ooh, this is actually easier. And you just start with your palms together and then kind of, as you roll, you can separate your hands. Move them out to the side. So we want each rope to be about a half inch thick for each snake. So I would say, this looks like it's about a half inch thick, right? I think so. And then we're gonna cut each of the ropes into one inch pieces. So that's about that big, about. So we can again use our chopper for this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, wow, so each one cut into pretty much eight pieces, wow, that's a lot. So then I'm gonna do one more piece like this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and brush these because I wanna get one batch into the oven while we keep working so you guys can see what it's gonna look like, okay? So now that we have our little our little pretzel bites, and you can kind of shape them. The end ones kind of get, got a little, uh, you know, because they were a little tapered at the end, so I just kind of made them into a nice little rectangle. But look at how cute the chopper makes the little rugged edges. It's so cute. Okay, so we'll do one more, and then we'll give these bites a bath and get them topped so we can get them into the oven to see what they're gonna look like. So we're gonna make another, put these off to the side. We're gonna make another rope. I'll start it off with my hands in the air like this. And then we'll put it on the table. This is, this is the method that I like. Oh, my sleeves are coming down. Okay. Roll it out. Start in the middle and then work your way to the end. So try to make sure your rope is about, or your snake is about the same thickness the whole way, because we want our pretzel bites to cook at the same rate. You don't want a really big pretzel that takes longer to cook than the other smaller ones. All right, so again, half inch thick. That's what we're doing. Okay. And then cut them into one inch pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I have more this time. Eight. <laughs> oh, I made 10 that time. I guess that piece of dough was a little bigger. And then the very ends, you can press that tip in to make it nice and rectangular. The other one should be pretty good on their own. Okay. So now 
what we're going to do is dip these guys into our baking soda bath. Make sure to give it another stir if your baking soda settled a little bit, kind of didn't dissolve completely into the mixture. <clears throat> and you're going to get out a baking sheet and put a little piece of parchment on there. And then you can just throw, not throw, drop, gently drop, you know, maybe half of your pretzel bites in there. And again, make sure your water is not too hot to touch. And then just pop them back out and put them on your baking sheet. I don't think I cut these this last one into a real inch. It looks more like a three quarter inch. That's okay. It'll just be pretzel mini bites. Okay. And then you can take your last, the second half of your batch here. Pop them in this baking soda mixture. Give them a little bath. Did you think you'd be giving pretzel bites a bath today? Okay, make sure they're totally coated and then take them out. Pop them on your baking sheet. to work with our other dough after we get this first batch in the oven so that you guys can see what they're going to look like when they come out. Believe it or not, oh, this is really, uh, my butter hardened. Would you mind just doing like really like 30 seconds? Miss Anastasia is going to do on a low power just 30 seconds to soften it a little bit because you want to be able to brush it. And right now it's pretty clumpy, so it's pretty chilly and so um, I can't brush it. So we'll just give it a little, a little tiny zap in the microwave to make it brushable. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna brush these bites with a little bit of honey butter, and then we can sprinkle our toppings on top. I'm gonna do, I have three rows. So I'm gonna do one row with sesame seeds, one row with salt, and one row with cinnamon sugar. Thank oh, you. Oh, it's a little melty. That's okay. It got a little melty. It's, at least it's brushable. That's what I asked for. So you don't need it to be melted at all. It just needs to be soft enough so you can brush it. Okay. Now we just use this brush and just wet the tops nicely so they're nice and shiny. It's kind of like painting. So we're painting the tops of our pretzel bites with our honey butter. Okay, two rows down, brush, brush. Make sure they're nice and shiny on the top. bites are brushed. I'm going to do sesame seeds on the top row, then salt, then cinnamon sugar. So you just take, when, when you're pinching for this, I would use not just my normal two pinching fingers with my index finger and thumb. I would use two fingers, the index finger and then the middle finger and the thumb. And get a little pinch of sesame seeds and then you just sprinkle, kind of rub your fingers together so some of the seeds come out. 
And then you'll see they're gonna stick to that honey butter mixture. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I need just a little bit more for this last one. Okay. Now I'm gonna do salt. So this coarse salt, remember, is, is the best. Gives that that nice little bit of crunch. So I'm gonna go sprinkle, sprinkle. Whoa, that one's gonna be salty. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay, so we have sesame, salt, and now cinnamon sugar on the last row. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Which one are you most excited about? The cinnamon sugar, the salt, or the sesame seed? I think I'm most excited for the salt ones, actually, and I want to dip them in honey mustard. Okay, so this is what they look like, guys. They look so good. So this is just two of our pieces of dough. Miss Anastasia is going to put them in the oven for us, and I'm going to keep working on our other dough. So you might, if your dough is sticky, need to roll it out with some flour. My dough is very easy to work with, so I didn't flour my work surface at all. So you just have to see what works, you know, kind of how your dough feels. So I'm actually rolling, you can roll, see what works better for you. I like rolling with my fingers, actually. And you can spread your fingers out like this. And then you're rolling more of the dough at the same time with those fingers spread out. That's pretty cool. Oh, except I got it a little thin in one spot. That's okay. I just pressed it back together. Dough is so fun to work with for that reason. Like if it gets too thin on one side, just kind of press it back together and roll it out a little more. Okay. So there's my rope about a half inch thick. And then chopper, and I'm going to chop it up into about one inch pieces. And by the way, if you don't have a chopper for this, you can totally use a butter knife. That's totally fine. Wow. So good. And then just pull them apart. This is quite the project, making pretzel bites. Okay, I'm gonna make another dough rope here, another snake. How's it going at home? Is it going well? All right, here we go. The sun is coming out out there. That's really nice to see. Hopefully it's warming up a little bit. Okay. There's our half inch rope. I'm gonna cut it into one inch pieces. Whoop. All right, we are not even halfway done with our dough. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to roll all this out with you guys. I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? No. Oh, we're already at an hour. Is this gonna be our longest class ever? I'll just keep going until our pretzel bites are done so you can see what the finished product looks like. We'll see how much dough I can get through. All right, I'm gonna make two more. If I do two more, then that'll be half our dough. And you know, they only bake in the oven for like five or six minutes, which I think is pretty amazing. We thought about making our dough in advance, but that's such a big part of this recipe that we just wanted to do it with you guys live in the class. 
So of course, you know, you can always, we always save these videos to our Facebook. We always save them on our virtual classes page. So you can go back and watch them again. Either because you want to make the recipe again or because if you miss something, you know, no worries. All right. Let's see, we got another rope here. Cutting them into one inch little bites. By the way, you can make, and maybe I should show you how to do this because that'd be kind of fun. I'm gonna show you how to make a full-size pretzel with one. Let's try to do that. Do you think that's a good idea, Miss Anastasia? Great idea. She loves that idea. So check it out. We're gonna take this piece of dough. First step is the same as for our bites. By the way, if your dough is going to sit out for a while, you might want to cover it with plastic wrap because otherwise it starts to get a little dry on the outside. So if it's going to be a while, you can cover it with plastic wrap or a damp towel, kitchen towel, damp clean kitchen towel. And that helps to keep the surface of the dough moist from getting that crust on top. You know, we don't want that. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. First step, if you're making a bigger pretzel, is to roll out it out into a rope. And we want it to be pretty big, pretty long, like a little bit longer and thinner than for our pretzel bites. And then what you're gonna do is take the ends of the rope and bring them together and then switch which end you're holding in your hand. So you take the ends, bring them together, and then <coughs> switch them, and then press them down into the dough. And then you have a pretzel, like a traditionally shaped pretzel, right? So that's kind of fun. Um, and then you know what else you could do is you can make a pretzel stick or a pretzel circle. Let's do two pretzel sticks with this. And then we're gonna give everything a baking soda bath and get them on our baking sheet. All right, so here we can make maybe two pretzel sticks. I'm just, that's really easy, right? You just cut it in half. There, a pretzel stick, okay? And then let's do one more, pretzel circle. Sleeves are coming down again. Okay, so again, nicely, nice even rope, same thickness approximately the whole way, about the same. And then here, you can just make a circle. So just bring the ends together and just kind of pinch them together. And you have a pretzel circle. So fun. So let's get a baking sheet. And again, with parchment on it. And we are going to get our baking soda bath back out. And stir it up again, because that baking soda kind of settled a little bit again at the bottom. And I'm gonna do our big pretzel first. And dip the whole thing in there. I'm gonna shake it around. Make sure the excess water kind of drips off and put it on our baking sheet. And now we've got our pretzel circle. Let's get that in there. Swirl it around a little bit. Oop, it came apart. And there we go, look at that. Oh, our, my pretzel stick almost didn't even fit in there. Perfect. And then we've got all of our pretzel bites. So you can see it takes more time to make the bites because you've gotta kind of separately pick up and dip all these different pieces and you have to cut them all, but they are really cute. And bite size is always fun. 
All right, oh my gosh, guys. As soon as I finish this baking soda bath, I am gonna show you guys the pretzels. How long did they take, Miss Anastasia? Six minutes. Six minutes. That's all they baked for. Isn't that amazing? So it's funny, like making your own pretzels sounds so hard, but really it doesn't take that much time at all. The longest part is waiting for the dough to rise. Okay. Look at all these pretzel bites. All right, let's get this, these last couple bites in here bathed in baking soda and warm water. Today's the perfect kind of weather for a bath. Oh, okay. There we go. Last batch. Let me get, bring my baking sheet a little closer. I can't reach all the way over there. There we go. Okay. You definitely want to make sure you don't have like clumps of baking soda sitting on your pretzel because baking soda tastes really funny. If you've never tasted it, I don't recommend it. Um, but you definitely don't want like a big clump of baking soda on there. So make sure your baking soda is nice and dissolved in your water. Okay, wow, our baking sheet is quite full. All right, this is it. Are you guys ready to see our pretzel bites? They look so good. Wow. Okay. Just a few more in here. I know the suspense is killing you, right? To see our pretzel bites. Have yours come out of the oven yet? Did you do what we did? Did you start cooking some of them? Okay, so I'm gonna brush these in a moment after we say goodbye, probably. Check it out. Aren't those beautiful? Nice and browned on the top, a little bit crunchy. So I'm gonna try one. I'm gonna try the one that I was the most excited about, which was the salt. That one, and I'm gonna dip it in honey mustard. So remember, no double dipping, okay? Dip it. Mmm. Wow. So good. All right. Well, I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna go ahead and finish these on my own so that you guys can get to enjoying your snack. I hope you enjoyed class today. I hope your pretzel bites turn out amazing. I hope you love them. Please, please, please send us photos or post them as comments to the video. We love to see you guys cooking at home and to see what you made. If you are enjoying class, uh, we would so appreciate it if you can make a PayPal contribution through our donation link, uh, which is on our virtual classes page and I think in the Facebook event as well. That would be awesome. And please tell everyone you know, even more important, tell everyone you know about our classes and hopefully they can join in the cooking fun too. Um, on Wednesday, Miss Anastasia's making, is it chocolate cupcakes? <gasps> chocolate cupcakes with vanilla frosting. It's our favorite cupcake recipe, so you don't want to miss that. And then on Friday, we have another pizza party. We are making squash fontina pizza, which is one of my personal favorites of our pizzas. So thanks again. Have a, oh, for the pizza too, by the way, we sell meal kits for those. If you don't want to do the shopping for it and you live in Chicago area and can come pick it up curbside, uh, we take orders until Thursday night for pickup on Friday. Have a beautiful day and look forward to seeing you guys on Wednesday.